Hello and good morning. Long time no see. So I am braving Facebook Live this morning after being unwell for a little while. Just going to check that I'm live in the right place. Hopefully somebody will be joining me this morning because I've not been on for a couple of weeks. So just bear with me while, while I check I'm live in the right place because that's always a good place to start. My MacBook feels like it's a million miles away and my, my glasses don't focus. They only focus on anything that's close. So if you are hopping on, please do say hello. It's always nice to know who is joining me. Now, for those of you that are close to me, you know that I have been a little unwell. Um, I had had a cold for the whole of November. Um, and it's taking its toll. I've had the dreaded big C. Um, so still isolating at the moment. Out tomorrow. But tomorrow's the last day. So if you're joining, say hello. I can see there's a few of you on here. So I am going to try not to cough. Um, and it's not a cough. It's more just a tickle because it wants to. So yeah, but I'm definitely on the mend. Definitely on the mend. Still can't taste anything which is pretty rotten um, and it's horrible not seeing anybody, but that's the way it is. It's the way it has to be. So this morning, I thought I would stamp with the stamps from the Paper Pumpkin Kit called Expressions in Colour. I'm looking down at it, it's on my desk to remind me because I'm always getting the names muddled up. So. Good morning, Belinda, all the way from Washington State in the USA. Thank you for joining me. And um, what time would it be there now? If you do, you're awake. Is it really early in the morning? My logistics, I'm thinking you're probably about six or seven hours behind. So if you are awake, it's very early, but thank you for stopping by. So yeah, so this morning I'm going to be playing with the Paper Pumpkin Kit and it's the Expressions in Colour kit and it's actually on the clearance rack at the moment and it's half price. It's £10. I've shared it with you before. I've created cards using the stamps. It's 2.05 in the morning. Goodness gracious me. I've had those those nights where I've been awake in the middle of the night, so... Um, hopefully you will be able to get back off to sleep um, and wake up at normal time. So catch up on the, the replay. There'll always be a replay and it goes over to you, to my YouTube channel. So you'll be able to catch me over there. So yeah, the paper pumpkin kits, um, they, they're like limited edition offerings. We don't get them very often. Um, the kits collection, which are totally different, um, they are actually available all of the time while supplies last. Um, but this particular paper pumpkin, I thought I'd focus on it this morning because it's gone into the sale and it's just £10. So it's amazing value. The stamps in it are beautiful, which I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using some sneak peek pattern paper from the upcoming January to July mini catalogue, um, which is my favourite set in, in the whole range of the papers. Um, so I'm gonna be using those. I'm gonna make a card and I'm gonna make a box today. Don't know if I've ever made a box on a live with you before. So I thought it would be nice to share something that I created for my retreat. It was a pillow gift that contained some chocolate. So I thought I'd make that with you today as well. So I don't want to be on here for too long. I say that every week. I don't want to be on here for too long and I end up still being way over the hour. So anyway, without further ado, let's make a bit of room, move everything out of the way. Uh, excuse the palm of the hand while I turn you down, get the light switched on and let's get crafting. So bear with me. Shift everything around a bit. Wait for the catch up. Remember to put the light on. <clears throat> Might have to um, just cough to clear my throat now and then, guys, just because it just helps. If you're hopping on, please say, say hello. My MacBook has picked the moment to freeze on me. 
it does it every time as soon as I switch you down and then I can't see to to do the zoom so we we'll just wait for catch up move you over that way a bit I think managed to paint my nails at the weekend as well having not been anywhere for quite a few days thought I'd make the effort and get my nails painted. I don't mind painting them, it's the, the taking off that I don't like. Right, I think we are okay with grid paper. Let's just get the view right so I can see what you can see. And then we'll open up the box and I'll show you what's inside. Some of you may have already purchased this kit when it came out, so it's called the Expressions in Colour and you have your little instruction manual in here and these are the nine cards that it actually makes in the kit. So that's what, if you followed the instructions, because you've got step-by-step -step instructions of, in here, those are the nine cards that you would make. And I very rarely make the cards that Stampin' Up! have pre-designed for us. I like to do other stuff with the contents. So in this particular one, we've got two ink pads in here and we've got an Evening Evergreen and a Bumblebee. And I'm gonna be using Evening Evergreen today, but I've pulled out my regular size one and I'm keeping these and probably will give these away as gifts. I've got quite a collection of the stamping spots now that arrive <clears throat> in these kits. The stamp set, let's find blank piece of paper so I can show you these in their full beauty. You can see got a nice Alfie hair there. By the way, Alfie's over with Jason in the house this morning. I left him over there. It's pretty rotten, the weather outside, and the door's going to be blowing open downstairs. So I thought I'd leave him over in the house. So these are the stamps. We've got some really good greetings in here. We've got this lovely floral image, which I'm going to use today. A little single flower some lovely background images here and then some great words and then this kind of like splodge um, which is really good for backgrounds as well so a really really useful set to have in your stash so I'm going to leave that one out because I'm going to be using it I cannot read any comments if anybody has left comments at the moment so we've got some lovely evening evergreen twine You've got some dimensionals and you've got some adhesive backed like iridescent sequins, which they're all different colours. You've got some, like some in the um, soft succulent, some in sort of fresh freesia and then some that look a bit kind of peachy, um, probably more bumblebee. So they're really great. Then you've got a sheet of glue dots as well. So for a complete beginner, this kit is great. Now we do not have in this kit, quite often in these kits, we have the clear block, but this time we had two ink spots instead of um, one and a clear block. So we've got some layering pieces for cards, some beautiful laser cut pieces. Mine are getting stuck, in, stuck together. Going to be using one of those today. Then, got some lovely vellum pieces, and you have got this thanks word in in German, French, and English. So that's gorgeous. Got three of those. Just think of all of the things you can do with that. And then we've got the sheets of printed vellum as well. I think there are three of those but mine are hidden underneath can't get them out it's because I've done my nails then we've got some card bases in evening evergreen some cute little die cut banners and some more labels here for adding greetings on and of course remember you can always use the reverse on these if you don't like what's on the front then we've got more card bases here with this kind of like, do we call that, what do we call, is it smooshing they're calling this technique. So more card bases which they're quite bright for me and then we've got our envelopes down in the bottom. So I'm going to put all of this back in because I'm not going to be using any of this apart from 
some of the die cut pieces. I am using some of the twine though. If you're hopping on, say hello. It's lovely to know who is here. Let me know how you are doing and where you're from. If you're from far away. Right, we can move that out of the way for one moment. And let's pull in and mount up the stamps. Now, the other items I'm using today are my stamping blends in Pale Papaya and Soft Succulent. Two of my favourites, you know that. I'm using my black Memento ink pad, my full size Evening Evergreen. I'm also using my Craft White, this is a very old one, my Craft White ink pad. And I've pulled out the soft succulent um, ribbon from the in colours. This is beautiful. I do think this might be on back order at the moment, not available to purchase. And then I'm also using this punch as well, which the name of it escapes me. And I think my catalogue is actually over in the house at the moment, which isn't very useful. I think it might be called the Corner Trio. That's a guess. That is a guess. So those are the products we're using. Let's move my MacBook right out of the way and get these inks stacked up. Let's see if I can find a couple of cleaner blocks. I've given all of my blocks a freshen up. Took them all over to the house and washed them all in soapy water. They do get a little sort of stained, even with, you know, cleaning in your... Um, your chamois or your stamping scrub, the blocks do, do get a little stained. So I'm going to mount up this lovely flower. Hello, Belle. How are you? Let me look. I can see there's a couple of comments that aren't showing. Good morning, Belle. Yep, two Belindas this morning. And Annette, good morning, Annette. How are you doing? All the way from Australia. Thank you for stopping by. It is so lovely to have you. Well, I also need this little flower as well. I'm gonna mount that one up. Looks very grubby, that stamp. But they've had a good clean. And let's mount up the word thanks. I just think this stamp set on its own is well worth the £10 of the cost of the whole kit. So, morning Ellie, I can see you're dropping in there. Are you multitasking? And then I've also mounted these two little, back, what I call background stamps, ready as well. Right, let's make a bit of room. And what I want to do first, because I'm using my stamping blends, I want to take my me Memento ink... Grab some white, basic white card stock, and I want to stamp. Let's pull in my foam mat. <clears throat> I want to stamp this image and just let it sit for a couple of minutes and allow the ink to absorb into the card stock before I start colouring with my blends. I just find it helps reduce like any bleeding that might happen, even though... Um, the blends are designed to use with Memento. I find if you ink and colour straight away, sometimes, you know, there can be a little bit of bleeding. So let's ink up this beautiful image. I'm going to do a couple while I've got it inked. Not got a very solid... That's better. I'm going to do a few of these and then they can sit and I can colour them in later. Let's fill up the whole sheet. <laughs> I do do this, guys, when I'm crafting. When I've inked something up, I always stamp multiples and then I've always got my little pot of bits and pieces to use at another time. So 
how beautiful is that flower? And I have decoupage with this flower. I've got um, a couple of cards to show you that I did a while back on a live. So I have decoupage with this flower as well, which just makes it pop a little more. So I'm going to cut one off. And put that to one side. Right, let's pull in my kits. And you could be quite shocked at my colours today. Well, partly shocked and partly not because you know I love the greens in our in colours. Soft succulent is most probably one of my favourite colours and I use it so often. Um, I feel like it's my signature colour of the moment. So um, if you're hopping on, say hello. I can see there's a few more people stopping by. So please do say hello. It's always nice to know who is here. So yeah, I've got some soft succulent, but my base is very dark today. So I'm going with evening evergreen. I do adore this colour and I don't feel frightened to use it in um, in large doses. Um, it doesn't bother me being dark. I know some people don't like using dark bases for their cards, but me being me and the person who loves lots of white space, um, it's something a bit different, but I'm really pleased with how how my card turned out. So I am stood here waffling and realising that I really need to stamp a couple of these because I want those to dry as well. So I'm just going to ink up in my Memento Black a couple of these flowers. So what is the weather doing? where you all are. As I said, it's pretty grim here this morning. It's damp, it's windy, it's raining. Pretty grim, but nothing we can do about it. I think we're gonna have some heavy rain later. We had a really cold night as well. It went down to well, it was supposed to go down to minus two last night so okay so let's bring in this new piece of dsp it wants to snow oh my goodness belinda hi ellie how are you i'm getting there ellie i'm definitely getting there still no taste which is rotten um, almost to the point where you feel like, is it worth eating? But yeah, you can probably hear it. I can hear it in my voice. I'm definitely not 100%, but it's weird. I'm getting there. So hello, Natalie. How are you, my lovely? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely feeling brighter. It can be a bit up and down. I have felt like brighter one day and then not so great the next, but definitely on the mend. Uh, raining on the cabin roof, Ellie, and it's chilly, You've got the heater on. Yeah, I mean, the heating is on low over here all the time, but I'm just looking at the thermostat. It says it's 18 degrees, but I've got a woolly on today. I've got a lightweight woolly on. In fact, look, I'm almost even in evergreen, um, and I'm not cold over here. So it's raining heavy in Filton. Oh, dear. Yep, great crafting weather. You've got that one right, Belle. So this gorgeous paper, let me bring it in. It's from a bundle. Where are my other dies? Probably shared this with you. It's from a bundle, well, a collection. Um, so this is a bit of a sneak peek of something coming in the January to July. January to July, July January to June. Now my brain has gone. January to June, I think, of course it is. January to June mini catalogue. These two will be coming our way. And we have this gorgeous set of papers. So this is one side and they are all basic grey and white wood grain, which I absolutely adore. She who loves a lot of white space these are going to get a lot of use. Now, if I flip them over, they are really pretty on the other side. So we've got garden green, misty moonlight, fresh freesia, 
we've got some pale papaya, cinnamon cider, and then again the colours in here. So really beautiful papers. Um, so you will be seeing a lot of those coming up, but I thought I would pull some in today. And I've cut a little strip here, so catching up on comments. Nat, you've had your cold for two weeks, but you're not coughing and spluttering like you were. Oh, bless you. Well, believe it or not, my cold started probably before the beginning of November because it was my dad's birthday on the 4th of November. And although I'd done a test and I was negative, I didn't want to go over and see them because I didn't want to pass on a cold, let alone anything else. Um, so the cold has been here for like a whole month and then obviously the only thing I can think is that when we were in London, picked up something far worse, beginning with C, um, hence been home for a few days. So, but yeah, test, I've tested, I've done another test actually yesterday, a lateral flow, and it was negative. So been doing lots of reading up about tests and when you should test and things like that. So... Yeah, it's showing negative, so definitely on the mend. But yeah, I, I didn't want to come live last week because I was so sniffy. I just felt it wasn't right to be sniffing. I'm so close to my phone and the, the, um, the microphone is so sensitive. I know a couple of weeks ago when I did a live, I wandered down the other end of the studio to blow my nose. And when I replayed it, I could hear myself blowing my nose and I thought... That is just not the right thing to be doing. So, yeah, definitely not a good plan. Okay, so also I've pulled in, because the kit has a lot of vellum in it, I've pulled in a piece of our vellum. And I'm going to stamp. You have seen me do this before. I'm going to stamp. I've got a bit of ink on here already. On here with the white ink. Now, I always call this the craft white ink. This is a very old one and I keep re-inking it. It's still working. It doesn't fit in my new stamping storage, but I don't feel the need to buy another one when this one still works and I'm still using it. So I hope that your cold shifts soon, Nat. Just take care. We've been really, Jason and I, we've been really taking care of ourselves. Um, you know, when we go out to walk Alfie down the lane, we totally wrap up, you know, don't spend too much time outside. But the one thing I will say is that we've been getting like, even marching down the lane, we've been getting out of breath, like really easily, which is not normal for either of us. So, so I'm just inking up this cute little sprig, let's call it. And I'm going to randomly stamp over the background have to be careful i'm only using one hand but have to be careful not to slip on the vellum because it's kind of quite slidey and i should have my mat under really let's turn that that way but i love the look of white stamping on vellum let's put another one in there I'm talking of blowing one's nose. I might have to do that in a minute. And then this one, which I do find is a little awkward with the craft white because my white ink is quite juicy and it can make it a little splodgy. I'm just going to gently... Can you see it looks a bit splodgy, but I'm just going to pop a few randomly in to fill a couple of gaps, put a couple on the edges and then I need to let this sit and dry for a minute before we build up anything on our card. I think that's enough because some of it's going to be hidden anyway so I'm going to do that one up <coughs> and let that, let's turn that over so you can see. It's such a really pretty effect. Now, I've not over stamped on here because 
I'm going to be hiding out the centre. You're only going to be seeing the outside. In fact, what I might just do is add, there's a bit of ink left on there, a bit in that corner, like that. Okay, and we're just going to sit and let that dry because the craft ink is a pigment ink and it will take a little while to dry. Right, let's pull back in this lovely flower. And I just want to... I need to move that out of the way. Take my chamois and just clean off my memento. And I'm going to use the evergreen, which is the same colour as my cardstock. And let's pull in my spongy mat and just add in out of the way you a bit of decoration in the corners oh this is stunning I do love I really do love this stamp particularly as a background so I think that's probably enough hopefully you can see that in the light so we've just got like a tone on tone effect which is beautiful and what else do we need to stamp while we've got the evergreen open let's stamp <clears throat> our greeting so i've chosen the thanks and in the set there are some really good ones we've got sending hugs which i love congratulations which covers lots of bases We've got You Are Amazing, and then we've got Thanks for Everything, and we've also got the little many there. So many thanks, many thanks for everything. Thanks, You Are Amazing. So lots of combinations. That's why I honestly believe this stamp set on its own, you're gonna get so much use, even after you've completed all of your cards in the kit, so. Am I even in shot? Because Facebook threw me out. My, um, my, my view changes and I can't see, I'm trying to scroll. So I'm just gonna ink up the word thanks in the evergreen. I've got a strip of cardstock here. I might need to trim this down a bit. Oh, I've just put ink on there. Let's turn it over. Must have a bit of ink on my fingers somewhere. Line it up on my grid. Try and stamp it straight. Let's pick that up and have a look. A little bit crooked. Let's have another go. Oh, that's even more crooked. I can see that. I, I've got this way too far away from where my head is. We'll go with the first one. <laughs> that one we can, I'm not going to throw that away because we can actually trim around that one. It's not rubbish at all. We can just trim that with scissors. So we'll keep that one. And let's just trim off. I've got my setup um, a little bit further away from the edge of my desk. I'm desperately trying not to hover too close to my phone because <clears throat> you'll hear me heavy breathing. Oh, it's rotten having a cold, isn't it? Right. Oh, I might need, need to be able to take a seat. Let's take a seat. That doesn't happen very often when I'm live. Now, do I need to, dare I, Try and zoom in a little bit without you seeing my ceiling. Let's pull in my mat. <clears throat> okay, so let's have a little drink first. I know you don't hear me as well when I'm sitting down. Obviously not as close 
to the camera, but I'm using the Pale Papaya and Soft Succulent, definitely two of my favourites, both from the latest set of in colours as well. And I tend to use mostly the bullet tip. Can you see here, we've got a thick line here and a thin line. The thin line, you've got this kind of bullet tip. And then on the thick line, you've got the brush marker. I very rarely use that end. I don't know why. Um, it's good for, I don't think I was even in shop then, but it's good for colouring in like um, really intricate things, but I'm quite happy colouring with the bullet. And there's nothing rocket science about my colouring today. I'm literally going to start with the light. So they're sold in pairs. You get a light and a dark of whichever colour you are choosing. And I'm literally just going to colour in. Oh, uh, and now I've started. This reminds me that my pale papaya is running low. I do have a brand new one in stock ready. So remember these are alcohol markers. They don't last forever. They're like an ordinary felt tip pen. They will run out, they will run dry. Um, but you will get a lot of use out of them before that happens. So I'm just going with the light, colouring the whole of the flower, leaving the centre part for the moment. And then I'm pulling in the dark pale papaya and just colouring in the centre. Now I'm not in line with my phone, so I don't know if you'll see that. Let's wait for catch up. Yeah, just colouring in the centre. And then I'm just going to kind of like add a bit of like shadow around where would be the darker parts of the centre of the flower. And then with the darker pale papaya, I'm just going to colour in these little sprigs, which probably should be green, but I'm going to make them pale papaya so that they add a bit of extra colour because we've got plenty of green going on the leaves. Just want to go back over the centre with another layer and then we'll pull in the, pale, the soft succulent. So starting with the lighter, let's have a quick look at comments while I'm down here. I don't know about you but I love to colour in. Love it. Quite often when I see the grandchildren, we colour in. Vivi loves to colour. She's pretty good as well. She's really good for three and a half. She's good at staying inside the lines. So I've just gone over with the light and then with the dark, where we've got that centre line of each leaf, I'm just going to run my pen over it. So I'm not re I'm not blending with these at all. I could have gone back in with the pale papaya and blended that darker area that I did, but I don't think it needs it. Really don't think it needs it. So random bit of colouring. Then we'll just do how many flowers? Let's do a couple of flowers. And all I do for this, again, is colour in. And it doesn't matter if you leave white space. I think that adds to, like, the depth of the flower as well. Because not all flowers are kind of one solid colour. I'm definitely no expert in colouring as well. Not very good at colouring, but I do enjoy doing it. I love the noise that these pens make as well, they, they squeak. So pale papaya light and then the dark one, I'm going to do exactly the same, just colour in the centres. With the dark and then I'm just going to kind of like, again, add dark to the centre but this time 
I am going to pull that edge into the lighter section, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to add like a couple of lines of dark in the centre and then where that edge meets, I'm just going to pull those two colours together just to blend that and you do get like a, a how can I describe, you do, do kind of then, it does kind of blend in together and you get that kind of deeper centre and kind of no harsh lines like you would with like a general pen. So I'm just kind of like merging the two colours together. Right, always put your lids back on your pens as soon as you finish because they are alcohol and they will dry out. So let's just snip these up and then we'll cut them out very quickly. Quick drink of water. <clears throat> if you're hopping on, if you've just scrolled and found me, we're just making a card and a gift box this morning. I'm using the Expressions in Colour paper pumpkin kit. I'm just going to quickly trim around these flowers that I've just stamped and coloured. And it's at this point you can see just how poor I am at doing my own nails. So I've got one of those lamps. I'm just not very good at it. But at the weekend, I thought I'd just add a bit of colour to my nails just for a change. Been stuck in for a while, so I just wanted to do something different. I'm very thankful that I have this place as my sanctuary. Never bored when you're a crafter, are you? We are super lucky. But I've been spending quite a bit of time in the house, which I don't normally do because I kind of live over here a lot during the week. But because Jason has been home as well, I've been doing work in the house so that I can be a bit of company for him. I did offer for him to come over and stamp with me, but he wasn't keen. <laughs> it's not really his thing. So just trimming around these little flowers, which are quite pretty. The only thing is, since I've done my nails, I can't pick anything up. Not that my nails are very long and I could before, but I think with the polish on it makes it trickier. So what did you guys all get up to at the weekend? I'm not gonna lie, being stuck in, the only thing that has bothered me is not being able to see my close family. I've not been too bothered that I haven't been able to go out. Okay, now we'll, we'll trim this one. Go around, you don't have to be too particular. Hoping that I'm in shot. Yeah, what did you all get up to at the weekend? Weather's been a bit kind of up and down, hasn't it? I can't really make up its mind what it's doing. It's cold one day, milder the next. Yeah, when we've been taking the little man down the lane, we've been wrapping up. Bobble hats on. <laughs> Just taking in a bit of fresh air, but not too much. We haven't been walking for miles and miles. <clears throat> Let's just scroll a minute. Morning, Jude. How are you doing? And morning, Kim. Ellie, you said you were working at the weekend. Yes, you did. And yesterday, so. 
you're decompressing in the cabin today, bless you. Yeah, it's not going to be long and the children are going to be breaking up for Christmas. Goodness me. How can it be? I know as soon as we hit August, we're like on the slippery slope. That's what I say. As soon as August comes, we hit the slippery slope for Christmas, I think. Right, I'm just going to give this a bit of manipulation. Give it a bit of a twist and a curl. And get the Tombow out ready. <clears throat> and I think... We can start actually sticking. Hopefully everything is dry. Let's do a bit of die cutting first. So the other product I'm using today is this very well used seasonal labels dies. Um, it is brilliant. I've used it so much, as I've said, not just for Christmas. And I use these labels all the time. I am in love with them. So see me using those today. So what I need to do first is pull in the plates. I need... This is our craft cardstock, which I am pleased to say is carrying over to the next catalogue. So I'm going to use that long one and that one there. Oh, dude, you've got no voice again. Oh, dear. But it's not sore. <clears throat> Mine has been quite sore. Like I said, it. I've been so up and down. It's hard to know. You think you're getting better. Right, I'm going to tape these down just so that they don't move. Yep, so this is the six by six craft cardstock which I love put my top plate on and just run that through quickly now this craft cardstock it is different colors on each side you've got like a more brown colour and then like a more sandy colour and I like both sides of it put that to one side because we can use that again put the dies back because that is best practice <clears throat> and let's start layering up Okay, so you can see all of our elements here. So what I want to do first is I'm going to lay some dimensionals on the back of here because we are mounting evergreen on top of evergreen and I want it to kind of stand out from the card a little bit so that you can see that I've gone over the edge on here. So let's put that one down first. <clears throat> Excuse me. The frog has never gone away. It's always been there since I had the cold at the beginning of November. Okay, we're just layering that one down. So hopefully you can see we've got a nice bit of height on there. So if you are planning on posting cards like this, then maybe don't layer. But you know me, I love, love to layer. And then I just have to suck up the extra postage. So I've got a strip of pale papaya. Now I'm going to give you the measurements of these. I did have a message from somebody who felt that... Me being live wasted their time because I didn't give measurements. And it was, she referred to what I do, look how grubby that is, as a tutorial. But this isn't a tutorial, guys. This is just me sharing my love of the products with you, okay? 
It's not a paid tutorial. If it was a paid tutorial, I would be giving you measurements of everything like I do with my classes, my online classes. So, um, but I always give you measurements of my card bases and I'm sure most of you know by now what they are, but my cardstock always measures. I can take a sheet of A4 and I cut it at five and three quarters, okay? Um, and it measures eight and a quarter here in the UK. And then my front layer here is three and three quarters by five and three eighths, okay? And then I've taken a strip of pale papaya. It's from my scraps, so it may not measure exactly anything. So it's just over an inch deep. So it's out of my scrap bag and it measures four inches. So it's just gonna hover over this layer here. Right, I'm just remembering that I zoomed in. So I might just pull out a little bit. We might have to go in before we go out. That's it. Just wondering if you're very close. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, my my, I'm here to inspire you and, you know, maybe help if you're struggling to create something, you know, a bit of an idea to get you going. So, <laughs> Belle, how rude. Um, those of you that know me, my friends, you know that I wear my heart on my sleeve and I do take things very personally. And I tried not to take this personally because I wasn't offering it as a tutorial. None of these that I do are offered as a tutorial. And it was just, it was a passing comment from someone, but it was the way she actually commented that I had wasted her time. So that's fine. If she felt like I wasted her time, then apologies for that. Um, but that wasn't what it was intended to be. So I'm gonna pop this layer, get the lid off the Tombow, get it flowing. Yeah, I'm just here to inspire you. And, and it's, I've been here since the first, first time we were locked down. And it's a way of me connecting and sharing my love with you all of the product. So hopefully there aren't too many that feel that way about what I share. Right, so that might be a bit high, but we'll go with it. So I've just laid down that piece of pale papaya. Judy, don't see why I should have to apologise. No, I know, it's just, when I read it, I was a bit like, oh. I don't, I don't tell you, I tell you quite often what I'm going to be using during my live, but I don't say get this out and get that out ready and, you know, let's stamp together. The idea is that if you're crafting along with me, that's great if you're, doing something of your own. I'm not expecting you to replicate what I'm doing now, unless, of course, I was posting out kits to you. That's a bit different. Right, I think this is virtually dry. It still looks a little bit wet, but we're going to lay it down anyway. Now, remember with vellum, it's see-through. So wherever you put adhesive, it's going to show through. So I'm just putting some down in the middle because it's going to be hidden. And this panel of vellum is going centrally on my card and it measures three and three eighths by four and one eighth and it's four and an eighth because that's like half of the width of our cardstock so thank you Ellie that's kind of you to say I know and I love your company as well guys it's you know it's, it's why I do this it's about sharing isn't it so you can see that adhesive on there and then next i'm going to lay down this beautiful large label with a tombow on the back there and we're going to pop that directly over the top of that vellum centrally I cannot see my whole screen, it's frustrating. <clears throat> and then next, this gorgeous piece of wood grain. 
look at the other side as well because I did contemplate about pulling in this colour. How cute are the bees on here? And I don't dislike this, this pattern. I really like it, but it's going to be the white. It's got to be the white. And I'm going to lay that one with an even overlap on my straight. Job to tell from where I'm standing, but it will be fine. Like that. So I'm layering and layering. Look at all these layers going on. I love to layer. I wish I could simple stamp. I'm not very good at that. And then my little skinny tag or label is going to go over the top of that. Next, I'm going to pull out from the kit, we we have got these lovely fresh freesia. Um, it's not foliage. I'm, obviously, that's some kind of plant. Maybe it's meant to be foliage. But you've got the three colours. You've got the like this evergreeny, soft succulent, like mottled one, the um, polished pink, and then the fresh freesia one. But on the back, they are white. They're lovely laser cut pieces. So I'm just going to pull out this one carefully. So don't want to tear it. And I use this one particularly because you know I am not a fan of colour. I mean, if this was polished pink, I would, I could deal with that. It's not too bright. But as per the plan, we go in white. And I'm going to lay that one. Turn it that way. I think it sits better that way. On there like that. Give the hands a wipe because I think I got tomboed then. Michelle, how are you? It would take your breath away if you read a comment made direct to me like that. Yeah, it was, it was through Messenger. It was a direct comment. It's fine. I've, it's done and dusted. You know, I just think if that's how she felt, that's fine. We're all entitled to voice our opinion, aren't we? But I am not a very opinionated person. I hate confrontation. I hate it. Just not me. Maybe that's wrong because sometimes I have feelings about things and I don't express them. I keep them to myself. But I guess that's just, that's part of me. Okay, so I'm going to pop on my thanks down at the bottom like that and then this one here I'm just going to pop a mini dimensional in the middle got lots of pop going on in this card definitely going to be a large letter stamp going on <laughs> on this one and I'm going to wedge it I don't want to hide the word thanks. I think there. Like that. Just wedged it in. And then I'm going to pull a couple of these little flowers. Gosh, haven't used my take your pick tool yet. First time use of the day. Give these flowers a bit of life. And then pop them down. Give them a press like that. <clears throat> and then to finish, so we've got the evergreen on the background, beautiful stamp. We've got the white craft stamp on the vellum. And then I couldn't not use this beautiful twine. So I'm just gonna pinch it between my nail, just to kind of straight, straighten it out a bit. Didn't quite work, did it? Maybe I pulled it a bit too hard. <laughs> and I'm gonna tie myself a little bow straight from the roll 
I never cut a length and then tie because you will always find you don't have enough. So just tie a little bow. Oh, look at that. One at long end and one very short. We'll soon salvage that. So if we pinch in the middle and pull the tail, it will just bring in. And then if we pinch both loops and pull tight, it will just hold it together. Now, how much do we want? That is gorgeous, that, that thread, twine, whatever we want to call it. And I could have used one of the little glue dots in the set, but like I said, I'm saving those to, to give to people, maybe new people that don't have any. Um, but I love that they do include glue dots in the kit. And I'm just, I've just rolled up a glue dot and I'm going to pop it down there like that. And there we're done. So a very dark card for me today, but bringing in a little pop of colour. Jude, you don't like bows, do you? <laughs> I love me a bow. I love tying bows. I think it's just one of those things. It's, it's in you or it isn't. You can either tie a bow or you can't. Ah, Belle. You believe that if we pay for a service that we don't feel meets our expectation, that warrants some feedback that may be critical. Oh, I can't read all of that. I'm going to have to read that to myself. That I was trying to read that on my phone. Um, yeah, I am just sharing what I love at the end of the day. So I'm glad that you feel the same way. Because for a minute I was like, <gasps> what have I done wrong? Did I do something wrong? Anyway... There's our card done. Slightly different. I can see to my original. You probably won't notice. But I can see that I popped this layer underneath my soft succulent banner. And on this one, I stuck it on the top. But I don't mind either. They both work. So yeah, I was really pleased with that. Having a little play with the stamps. Let's put that to one side. And next, I've got a little treat for you. So I've got a box. And it's not very often I make a box during a live. And I will give you measurements for this, guys, because I feel that if I'm sharing a box with you, that you need to know how to make it. So here are my bits and pieces. Let me find my instructions. Oh, they're right here wedge them so that I can read them. <clears throat> Have a little drink. Yeah, Michelle, wouldn't it be lovely if, if we could purchase this? I could see it coming in a trio. Jude, yeah, you're good at recreating my boxes, aren't you? Into new boxes, which I love. And Belle, was it you? No. Who am I thinking of that came recently and made a totally different box? I don't know why I thought it was you, Belle. It probably totally wasn't. Okay, so no surprise that we are using the same colours, same stamps. I've done a bit of colouring ahead of time. And I'm not going to share the box with you, but I'm going to give you measurements along the way. And you can decorate this box however you want. I've got a, another one to show you that. So originally I designed this box for my retreat and it was for a pillow gift. It had chocolate inside it. So we're going to start with a piece of evergreen. Now this measures, let me just grab a full sheet. This measures four and a half inches. By 11 and 5 eighths. What can you see? Let's, I haven't got my whole sheet. So, literally, take a sheet of A4 cardstock and chop it down the middle. Okay, so at four and an eighth, so you're going to get two base pieces from one sheet of A4. Um, Bella, it wasn't you. you did. I, I, somebody came not long ago. 
and did a wrong score and recreated a box, which happens a lot. Yeah, so cut it down the middle at four and one eighth and then turn it landscape and cut it at 11 and five eighths, okay? I might try and put some visuals up on my Facebook page later because I have a little template. Always have a template with visuals so that you can see where we are cutting. Then we need, this is for the box also. Now you could use this from the leftover piece, the other half, um, but if you've got some scraps, I recommend that you, you use those. You need two pieces that measure three and a quarter by three and three quarters, okay? Then we need a long strip of, this can be any width, a long strip of soft succulent. I think mine is three quarters by the whole of a length of A4. And I've got some craft card stock here, but that is for decorating the box. So these are all the pieces you need to actually create the box here. So let me pull in my scoreboard. I don't know whether I need to zoom out. I really don't want to because you know you quite often get a view of my ceiling when I'm zooming out. So I'm only scoring landscape on this long piece. So I may not need to. Right, so what we need to do, so this long piece, we're going to pop it in the scoreboard. Let's just come down a little bit. I think you can see. It did bother me a bit, Jude, but I'm, I am letting it, I'm let, letting it go now. It's gone. Can you see the top? Because my Mac won't, oh yeah, you can see the top. Okay, so we are landscape in the scoreboard and we're going to score at two and three quarters and I'm using the small ball. So you've got a large ball tip and then a small I'm using the small on the cardstock so two and three quarters five and a half eight and a quarter you'll see a pattern and then ten and a quarter so really simple scoring two and three quarters five and a half eight and a quarter and ten and a quarter it's at this point, you hope you've written down the measurements right. <laughs> then these two panels, we're going to put them in landscape. So with the longer edge, and we're going to score at half an inch from each edge. So half an inch and then turn it and half an inch. Half an inch. Turn it around and half an inch. Then we're going to turn it portrait and score it at just half an inch on one side. So theoretically, we've scored it at half an inch on three edges. Okay. Right, scoreboard's going away. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to hang on to my ball tip scorer because I'm going to need that. I'm bringing in a ruler and my pencil and a little bit of advertising here for Mercure where I hold my retreats. I adore these pencils. I managed to get myself a couple more. They're a bit scarce, but I managed to get a couple when I went for the retreat. So love, love, love those pencils. Right, what we're going to do next is these two panels here. We're going to have the score, that horizontal score line at the bottom. We're going to take a ruler and measure in from an inch. Let me get you in shot. Got Tombow all over my ruler and make a little marker up there and then an inch 
from the other side as well. Okay, and I'm just gonna make a little marker. So hopefully you'll be able to see my little markers there. So just to, to reinforce that with the score line, the horizontal score line at the bottom, mark in at one inch on each edge at the top. Okay. And then what we do, my throat is getting very dry. From that one inch, my MacBook's going to sleep. From that one inch marker point, we're gonna score down. How can I show you? To this like crossover here. So we're gonna score down to that point. If I do it, then you'll be able to see. So we're gonna do that on both sides. And I'm doing this on my spongy mat um, because it just helps get a nice ridge. What even is the time? Five past 11. Just wondering for how long I've been waffling. <laughs> I'm gonna do it on both and then I'll show you a close up. So we're from that one inch marker, we're coming down diagonally to the point where the other score lines cross. Hopefully you can see that. I will put some visuals up for you to show these cut lines. Okay, then take our snips and we're gonna cut off, just taking off a wedge. So with the score line, that horizontal score line at the bottom, we're just gonna take off, oh, I can't see with the light, a little wedge at the top of each. And then we're gonna cut out wedges from the bottom, just so that it all comes together nicely. Okay. So I've just wedged from like each edge. So I'm gonna do that again with the horizontal line at the bottom, the top, left and right panel just take a wedge off and then the bottom panel here oh i need to hold it with two hands otherwise we've got a wobble so it would be a bit like taking out the corner maybe that will show it better if you took out the corner like that and then took a wedge off. It's exactly the same as what I've just done, just a different way of doing it. Okay. Now, because I designed this box myself, I did find at this point, I may need to trim a bit off of this height here. So from this distance here. So just like trim a slither off here, but we won't know that until I fold everything together. So what we're going to do is fold that bottom panel in like that. It's so hard at showing boxes. Maybe that's why I don't do boxes very often. And then this diagonal, so I'm on the reverse, we've got the diagonal fold here. I want to fold that back and then the other one back the other way so that we have like a little Z fold. So we're gonna come back on the diagonal and then fold the tab back over so that we end up with a piece looking like that, I'm trying to show it the best I can. So I folded the bottom under, I folded back on the diagonal and then gone back over with the tab.
give it a reinforce with your bone folder. <clears throat> and then we're going to pull in, put those just to one side for the moment, and pull in the large piece that we scored and just reinforce all of these score lines like this so they're all folded up and then what I want to do with these two edges is take my trio punch and round the edges I do love this punch. It's super pretty. It's got a lot of Tombow on it, but this one is gorgeous. Let me find a scrap to show you. Oh, how lovely is that? Very pretty. And I do use this one quite a lot. This is like a ribbon hole. So you could just thread ribbon through to make a closure. In fact, I won't be doing that today, but I did do it on something very recently. Oh, I remember it was my class. It was another class. So we've now got lovely rounded edge on here. Due to have a drink, yeah. I know, constantly sipping water to keep the throat hydrated. <clears throat> You're probably doing exactly the same. So can you see how we are starting to take shape a little bit here? So what we're gonna do, now this is where we may need to trim a bit off of this top edge. So in, what's gonna happen is this little tab, so with, with it facing in for this side, with like the indent coming in, this little tab sticks down here at the bottom. It's a bit fiddly and it's not an exact fit. If you can tweak it better, then, then please do. And then this side, this panel comes up and sticks here. And this is where it, it tends to be a little bit tall on this edge because it's going around, am I in shot? It's a job to do this without sticking it. It's gotta go around these folds and without making this measurement like a smidge bigger, it's really difficult to get it together. I can't do this without it gluing, so I need to just glue it. Let me just check height. So it's gonna sit in that bottom panel. And what I need to do is just check that, that this panel here, this edge isn't too long. I think once I glue it, if I glue the bottom bit in, then we'll be able to see. MacBook is sleeping. So a bit of Tombow on here. I'm gonna fold that back and hold it and lay that directly down centrally, as central as I can and press it down, just check, okay, so we've got one side in and then having it this way so that you've got like an indent inwards, not out, I'm rubbish at explaining things, just watch, just watch and hopefully you'll pick it up, um, bit of glue. This is where you cannot be being face to face with someone. So you can actually show them. And then we're just gonna pop that side panel on like that. Just hold it out so that it's straight. The great thing about Tombow, of course, is that it slides around a bit. Just getting a bit of a scrap. Got a bit of overhang there. So we end up with this panel. I'm going to try and zoom out a little bit. So 
so that hopefully you can see all of it if I put it that way. Okay. And this is where, now I can show you, can you see that this, this panel is slightly taller than the front of my box. So I, will, I can now put that in my trimmer and just trim off a slither. Let's check the other side. It's just slightly taller. It's got a bit of Tombow on there. So I'm just going to run that in my trimmer and trim off a smidge, a smidgeroo from each one. Oh, it's a job to see. From each side, just to tweak it. In the hope that it's at a better height. That's much better. Can you see I've got like a level level piece there? Right, let's get gluing. Otherwise it's going to be lunchtime. <laughs> Jason will be wondering where I am. So a bit of Tombow on there. Make sure that dries properly. You can put it down and give it a bit of a press with your bone folder. And then we'll do the opposite side. That's it. And then bring those edges together. Just checking comments. And then we'll do the back. So these two tabs here get glued to the back. Oop. Could probably pinch that bit like that actually. Talking of pinches, I seem to be doing nothing but pinching myself with things lately Let's just give that a little press on the inside and then the final one here it's a bit tricky to get into so I'm just going to take a scrap put some glue on and add a bit inside like that just because it's difficult to get my Tombow in there And give that a pinch. A bit of Tombow escaping there. And there, let me just give my hands a wipe. Give it a little pinch. And there we have our kind of little, what shape would that be? be? I don't know. But our little box with with nice little edges that are indented. So nothing too tricky, hopefully. What is going on? So quite easy to put together, I would say. Nothing too fiddly. Uh, and it's actually quite a nice size box. So what I want to do now is take my strip of soft circuit. And I said this can be any width. Um, if you've got scraps in your scraps bag, just use that. But I've used the whole length of an A4. You may not need as much as that. And I'm just going to wrap it around. I'm going to start on the top and wrap it around. I don't want to pull it too tight because this is like a belly band that we're going to be able to lift, take it on, on and off of the box to keep it closed. So I'm going to put a bit of Tombow, can you see, on that end and a bit on that end. And hope that I've got a piece that's straight so that they match up, which it does, thankfully. 
and then I'm just pulling it apart before the Tombow sticks too too tightly. I'm just I've just pulled these two apart so that I've got a bit of movement between the box and the belly band so that it will slide. Okay. And then looking at my original now to see what I need to do. Let's create a little tag for the front. I'm going to put that there like that, just so you can get an idea of the angle. So I've got another scrap of the craft card stock. I'm going to run it through with this cute little tag. But also, you may have noticed in this die set, you've got like these ribbon slides, which are beautiful, but you've also got these cute little toppers for your tags it's not waste card so I'm just going to put these two together actually how far down do I want that can't pick it up maybe a bit lower don't want it too high Otherwise it might tear if I do it close, to, too close to the edge. So I'm just gonna stick those together, run that through very quickly. It does look a bit crooked, but I'm not bothered. It can be on the walk today. I'm a bit cautious of how long I've been now and how much longer the voice will. It was a bit of a wonk, but isn't that pretty? Let's put that one back. Safe and sound. And then ahead of time, I already did these two here. And I colored in and stamped one of these flowers. So let's just really quickly trim around this one my macbook keeps going to sleep i need to learn how to bell you could probably tell me that how on my macbook i have it so my screen doesn't sleep so quickly <laughs> i'm sure you can change the settings so that it stays awake for a little longer you know, a bit like on your lock screen on your mobile phone, you can have it so that it stays awake for longer. Okay, nearly there. Oh, who doesn't love a bit of fussy cutting? I think you all love it secretly. <laughs> Give it a bit of a curl. Curl it one way, then it curl it the other way. And maybe we'll make use of this crooked one that I did. Bring in my long scissors. And see if we can cut straight. If not, I might have to put it in my trimmer. we stick close setting screensaver okay I will try that thank you you cannot beat a long pair of scissors I do wish it stampin up still sold these scissors I can understand why they don't because we've all bought them but yeah, definitely a long pair of scissors in your crafty stash is important. Right, so I've also got a strip of this. Let's pop down my greeting first. Let's have a little zoom in. Okay, 
getting quite good at this zooming. I'm not showing the ceiling. <laughs> oh, I think I've put them in the wrong place. Wasn't thinking. Need to pull that one off. Might get away with the other one. It's going to overhang. That was silly. Don't think I'll get that one off without salvaging it. Oh, we might just move it in a bit like that. I was getting a bit happy with my dimensionals then. Can you see that that bit of adhesive left there? A rubber or adhesive remover on that. Bit of a small piece to try and do it on, but it will pull it all off. Can you see it's nice and clean now? And then we'll just pop that one down at the bottom. I'm going to trim off a little edge on there. A bit of Tombow. Cannot pick anything up. And I'm going to lay that one just under my thanks. Like that. Give it a squeeze. Trim off the edge. Got Tombow on my grid paper now. Add in the flower. I'm nearly getting to the edge of another sheet of dimensionals. I'm not even going to look at my watch now because I know I've I'm way over time. And we'll pop that one there. Let's give these a bit of a curl. One up there. Could have used my take your pick tool. Pop one in that little gap. Nearly done. And pull in the ribbon. Where did I put it? In my box. So yeah, this is the soft succulent. The open weave ribbon, it comes in all five of the in colours, but I do think this one is out of stock at the moment. And I'm just going to take a length, wrap it around. Cut it off with my gluey scissors that left a nasty edge but my sharp ones will be fine and then hopefully you can see I'm going to thread that through I'm not going to do a fancy bow I'm just going to do a knot on here pull these two make sure that we're on the belly band Pull these two so they are the same length. And just tie a knot. In the middle. Put your little finger in there to keep it all still. And then pull it tight. those nice sharp scissors back in cut a nice edge and there we have you could actually I think what I did was I popped a glue dot under here to hold the ribbon on let's do that show you how easy it is to do just pull up a glue dot on some scissors or you take your pick lift that back and pop that under like that and that will hold that ribbon in place but this is designed to slide off 
like that. And when you open this up, it kind of expands out. So you gotta go, Belle, no problem. Hope your meeting goes well. I'm virtually done anyway. I've just got a couple of things to show. So yeah, there we go. Let's bring in pretty simple box. Here's my original, much the same. And I'll show you the one that I did originally. This one has chocolate in it. So this is the one I did for my retreat. And I used all soft succulent because that was what I had in stock. It would have looked nicer with even an evergreen belly band or ribbon. And it's kind of designed to sort of sit like that. And then inside of this one, if you pull off the belly band and open it up, I popped in a Terry's chocolate orange because it's a bit of a, a tradition at the retreat that we make something that holds a Terry's chocolate orange because we all love to give a Terry's chocolate orange. They're great for teacher gifts. Um, we took it out of the box and then inside I just created a little kind of inner box so that the Terry's chocolate orange didn't go anywhere. It kind of stays in there quite nicely. So, And I did create a bigger version of this, which I may share with you at some point. That will probably be a paid class because um, it's a lot more work. So, yeah, and then your belly band just slides back on. What a lovely little gift box. You could It's quite a good size. You could get quite a lot in there. Um, but who wouldn't love, even if it was just some posh chocolates inside, who wouldn't love something given in something that you've made with your very own hands? And I think that's the precious thing about what we do. For sure so so there we go i survived i managed without a cough i might have had a little cough um but i managed a bit of a sniff but wanted to share this with you because this is happening tomorrow okay we have free shipping for the whole of the day if you spend 35 pounds now that is at a price bracket where if you spend £30, I believe, mine is 30 not 35 and use my host code, you will get an extra gift in the post from me, along with a hand stamp card, just to say thank you for shopping with me and supporting my small business. So thank you, Annette, for stopping by. I'm glad to be of a little inspiration of some way or another. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The cough just got me. Um, but I will, I will definitely pop up some measurements for you of the little box and also just to show these I did on a previous live using the stamps from this paper pumpkin kit again you can see here where I decoupaged with that one so the stamps just go on and on don't they and then just to remind those of you that are wanting gift vouchers because I know a lot of you get gift vouchers through me um, because your family don't know what to get you for Christmas. So this is one of the designs of my gift voucher boxes. So they can be of any value. You can even use the voucher towards a class as well. So using the lovely Eden's Garden paper, a um, bit of pretty gold ribbon and the Peaceful Deer as well, which I love. So yeah, and the Christmas season stamp set, which is gorgeous. So... I am going to love you and leave you. What time are we doing? Oh, way over time. Way, way over. But I've missed you for two whole weeks. So um, we're catching up, aren't we? I'm going to go over to the house now, have a coffee with hubby. And then I will be back to work after that. So thank you all so, so much for stopping by. It's been lovely to connect with you all. I um, hope you've enjoyed the projects. And I'll be back with you all very, very soon. So take care for now. Um, and bye.